How do you there guys, welcome back to Edgar TV. Today we're going to be taking a look at the countries, at the nations, where it's best to play darts around the world. Now, disclaimer first of all, I have played darts in many different countries and countries above what I am going to show you. I've played darts like in Germany isn't on this list, Canada's not on this list. There's a lots of things that will not be on this list. Now the reason for that is because I played those events as part of the PDC system. I'm looking here at the world ranked events. Now the WDF is an organization that does tend to get a bit of flack for things. Certainly when I've been doing videos, like, oh, the WF should sort this. And yeah, maybe as the overseeing body, they should. However, what tends to happen or what does happen in these events is it is the home nations that run the events. So the issues that have been flagged up have sort of been passed to the the home nation, so to speak. They run them on behalf of the WDF. The WDF just awards the ranking points and criteria. So we've had our say in the vlogs. It's now time to work out who is the best nation at organising and putting on events. And I'm going to go through them all for the various different reasons. So what I've got here is a little tier list for you. Now, I've only got four categories. The reason being is very simple. You can't have something in the middle. It's either above standard, below standard, really good or not. So what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to pick things out like, for example... Sweden, we're going to put those here, they're above standard, they're above average, they're the practice area for the players, the event ran quite smoothly, could it be better, yes, um, the backdrops was a bit white which was just a bit on the eye and also the timings of the event just ran a little too long, so they could easily bring that down, so nearly there, but above standard, certainly one of the better events. Now, Faroe Islands, I'm going to put them just below. Now, it may seem a little harsh because the Faroe Islands, facilities-wise, was fantastic. They had plenty of practice boards for everybody. The event ran quite smoothly, but the format sucked. We did a round-robin stage of 118 players, with which 118 players qualified. So it made the round-robin stage completely irrelevant, and the event was ran for the benefit of the locals because they didn't think the locals would enter should it be a straight knockout. So they did round-robin. Okay, do a round robin, but at least eliminate someone. At least eliminate half the field. Do groups of four. And if you want to keep the locals playing, top two go through to the knockout. Bottom two, they go through to like a, a supplementary cup, so to speak. Something different. But it was not ran for the benefit of the players there looking for the ranking points. It mashed up the seedings. I think I was seed four and I was playing the number two seed in the last 32. So yeah, it was, it was all over the place. So... That was why they've been marked down into a just below standard there. I get these the wrong way round. Slovenia. I think that's Slovenia. I'm going to put them there. Just above, like, they're just below the standard. Reason being for Slovenia, although I won the event, so you'd think I'd absolutely love it there, it was ran, there were just like six redraws, they got it wrong, they had to stop the event after it already started. The boards was okay, but the lighting was very dull, so like the middle part of the board wasn't lit very well. So it was okay, it was okay, it was decent. I liked the room, the room was good, there's plenty of seating, so the facilities was good. Um, the, the venue it was played in, can't knock it, but just a couple of things wrong there on that and that's why wales is going in here as well redraws redraws got it wrong the event started and we had to do it all over again redraws at wales it seems to be a bit of a common theme this redraw redraw had to be done in england as well which also goes just under standard reason for that I wasn't even seeded. I should have been seeded. I wasn't seeded. Then instead of doing the redraw as such, they moved everyone around. So everyone, they ended up jigging the draw around by about 10 people having to move, which they should have just redrawn it. it, it once you make that mistake, just crack on with it. But right, so what does it take to be up here? What does it take to be a gold standard? Look no further than Switzerland. Gold standard quality the event ran for the benefit of the players plenty of space loads of practice boards staggered events so that the women started after the men's because obviously the men has more entries so use all the boards get the first round done then start the next then and it, it was just bill it was everything about switzerland they just nailed the one thing they missed was some tables just to put your table uh, to put your 
uh, darts and things on. Other than that, loads of space, loads of boards. That's all we ask for. Event on Darts Connect so you can monitor it. It's all we ask for. That I've got a place that I can practice and that the event runs to time. They did that absolutely spot on. Switzerland, gold standard. Just like Iceland. Iceland, practice room you can go into games room plenty of boards nothing being too delayed running it for the benefit of the players rather than trying to make the players stay in the venue which for me is one of my biggest bugbears in darts and it's why i won't go to many local opens because you tend to find the the benefit or the reason the local open is running is to fill the room and then the job of the organizer is to keep you there as long as they can or that's how it feels to me. And that's how some of these events do feel as well, that they're trying to keep you in the venue rather than thinking about the darts tournament. So player experience first of these two nations really do hammer home that one. I do think Ireland's quite close to that when I went to Killarney, but I'm just going to drop them in here into the second tier purely on the fact that there wasn't enough practice boards. Now, this was a gold event, which meant there was like 600 or so players but there was only like a handful of practice boards. So a few more practice boards and they could go up into that gold standard, but they, they do need a few more practice boards in there. Catalonia, gold standard. Fantastic event, really good. Not only because it's near Barcelona and like the ambience of the place is great, but the player consideration, lots of practice boards, lots of like well-ran, quick, organized events, lots of space, massive room, Everything you could possibly want. No complaints with Catalonia. That place, really good. Down at the bottom. There's going to be no surprise here. Hungary hits that. When I later went Lake Balaton. Players throwing darts at trees to get practice. No practice boards. You weren't allowed in the room unless you was playing your game. Which meant we had to sit outside. There was a thunderstorm going on outside. We had to sit outside. So, well below standard. Not good enough. And that needs a little bit of a review. Scotland, really poor. Again, hundreds of entries, handful of practice boards, nowhere really to sit. People walking across your hockey while you're playing, room not big enough, room too small, hour long queues at the bar, just substandard. It wasn't good enough. They hit the bottom of the list. Belgium is very close to being here, but I'm just going to put them above. Now, the reason I'm putting them or was looking at putting them in the very bottom here, the toilet situation. If you remember, I talked about that in the last one. Absolutely filthy, disgusting. Can't believe anyone would ever use them. It was awful. Um, you had to use tokens to get drinks and food, but you had to buy a wristband to be able to spend your tokens. They wanted you to pay to use the toilets. But the reason they're up here, though, rather than down here, facilities, they're down here, absolutely sucked. But the next level up, because the actual boards was good, Nice, solid, fixed hockeys, wide hockeys, space. Yeah, it was an improvement on that. And yeah, the actual dartboard side of things was good. So that's why it goes up there. Organisers need to just maybe brush up on the rules a little bit because I did have a bit of a debate with them around that. So yeah, really, uh, it's close. Holland, the Dutch Open. I'm putting them in second two. It would be up the very top because of that player consideration. Now, what they do at the Dutch Open is they have a VIP lounge, which is if you're one of the top-ranked players or a known player that you're there for the purpose of trying to win it, you go in the VIP lounge. Now, the VIP lounge has its practice boards, private bar, things like that, where you can sort of get drinks quicker, food quicker, practice a bit more, rather than being out in the main event, which has got like 6,000 entries. I like this. I like this because it considers the players' experience. Some players are there just for the fun. Some are there just to play in an open. Some are there for different reasons. This separates the players that are there to be serious and gives them the best opportunity of being serious. So I like that. The streaming lanes, I like that. So there's a lot of things I do like about it. The one thing I don't is just the length of the event and winner marks. I won my games and I was thinking, right, surely what happens is a loser turns around and says, don't you worry about that, Matt. I'll mark it. You get off. You've got a game to get ready for. No, that doesn't happen at all. What happens is you stand and mark. So you'll win a game in like 15 minutes and you'll mark a game that takes 30. So you're there, you're out of the practice area for like too long for my liking. So winner marks needs to go. That is running the event for the benefit of the organisers. I don't know what the solution is, but that's not it. That's not it for me. That That's putting the player's experience last. So 
maybe have some hired markers that you can hire markers for maybe take a deposit where you don't get your deposit back if you don't mark something along those lines there's loads of things like that that go on nowadays in darts you don't have to penalize the winner because that's where it felt it felt like a penalization so i'd like to see something changed in regards to that last one for me is slovakia i think i've got this the right way around with my slovenia's and my slovakia very good lovely venue enjoyed it there plenty of practice boards plenty of space different rooms really did sort of enjoy my time in um, Slovakia can't really have too many complaints about that one so if you are looking to get out there and play some of the WDF just be aware that no two experiences are going to be the same if you go to Germany it's going to be different to if you go to Ireland they are ran by the home nations which means you get a different experience and hopefully if you are looking at going to some of the WDF events I've maybe pointed you in the direction of some of the ones where they're going to be ran a little bit more like what you'd expect when you're out there chasing ranking points to try and get to a big iconic event like Lakeside if you have enjoyed this video, please do pop a like. If you have been to some of these venues, if you've gone to some of these opens, remember, it is not just me here. It is a community vibe. Get down to the comment section. Share your experience because I'm sure there'll be people down there looking for a little bit more information on some of these events. And if you do want to see exactly what they're like, there is a vlog section right here on my YouTube channel which has all the video footage of every single one of these events I've talked about so you get to see it first hand up front and personal catch you soon guys for some more edgar tv